so you can hear me right now. So um, I will talk about pigeons, like tracking pigeons with Python and OpenCV today. And first, I would like to introduce myself. I'm Nesli Hanedesh, and I studied biology in Turkey uh, as a bachelor. Then later bachelor, I decided to go on academy. Then I studied environmental science, uh, which was combining like uh, like uh, botanic and zoology together. But um, after finishing all my lectures on my uh, like um, proposal time, I was thinking if I want to go on like working. Um, unrelated topic topics than the animal behavior or if I want to like switch my topic totally and go somewhere else and at least do my master thesis about the animal behavior then um, I decided to move to Germany and uh, for my master thesis and after my master thesis my department offered me a PhD positions now I'm the PhD researcher at biopsychology department in Bochum in Germany, again, the name of the university is Ruh University Bochum. And for now, I'm defining myself as a behavioral scientist, and I'm on the way to be a real behavioral scientist, actually. And first, I would like to tell, talk about like what uh, behavioral scientists do. So this is handwriting from Aristotle. And here uh, he is defining uh, different animals' f um, behaviors like um, courtship behavior or um, agonistic behavior. And here you are seeing an experimental uh, experiment, um, like experiment design from a paper. Um, this is an etogram for aggressive and submissive behaviors in pigs. So maybe you may see here, like in total, uh, they observe over one thousand eight hundred uh, different behaviors. So what did they do here, they recorded pics and for two hours and later they watched the videos, different people, then they made the etogram. Etogram means that, uh, you watch the animals, then, um, like you define particular behavior, then you, uh, name these behaviors. You would say, oh, this is an aggressive behavior. This is a courtship behavior. Or like, uh, you would say, you want to be more specific, then you would say, oh, this is the attacking behavior. So you uh, make this kind of etograms for different animal species. And he, here you are seeing an example from a zoo. So like observers sitting in front of the uh, pandas and watching them and making observations and writing down what exactly the panda was doing. Like, uh, for example, Ying Ying was approaching Pan Pan. Uh, then like, so here you see like, it's written, they're writing down that, okay, this panda was doing at this time. Then, uh, later on, they would just like, um, define this. So this was the avoid, uh, behavior. Then the animal was also ignoring the other animal. So basically, like they were watching the animals, pandas and defining their behaviors. And here you're seeing an experimental design from 1970s. And, um, this is a closed environment. And here you see the water and uh, also the uh, food source is unlimited. So, uh, beginning of the experiment, they put particular number of uh, rodents here and they watch their behavior after, uh, like, I think like over, uh, one year. And so the space was all the time limited and the population was increasing after some time, then they observed like more aggressive behavior and uh, normally rodents will take care of their offsprings, but also uh, after the um, the population increasement, they just discovered that the females are less uh, responsible for the offsprings, they are not caring about the uh, feeding them, then uh, there was also uh, some like dead birds then uh, actually this named um, behavioral sync also in humans they would observe this like you would put a particular number of humans in an environment after a while like you would try to make all of them happy you would give like uh, enough entertainment enough food enough water but still you would start to see different kind of behaviors but back then what they were doing they were uh just standing there and watching the behavior of the rodents, then they were saying, oh, like the aggressive behavior increased and the female care decreased. They would uh, define this kind of 
uh, steps on the animal animals animal behavior. So until now, I show you the uh, the animal behavior um, measuring manually. And what we see here, um, the observing animal behavior uh, manually would be slow and laborious. And uh, the experimental would make subjective decisions. Uh, this uh, would cause to difficulty in reproducing the experiments. And uh, if you're doing a research directly in the nature, not directly watching the uh, videos, then uh, you would affect actually the animal group that you're working with. And uh, just think that you have uh, 200 videos, then you have to watch all of them. Then after a while, uh, you start to make attention-related uh, mistakes. So this was actually happening happening to me. I was recording my pigeons. Then after, I don't know, like one hour watching the videos, then I was just getting tired. Then I was just uh, seeing that I started to just not detect some particular behaviors. Then I had to watch the videos again. Or I was also having a collaboration uh, collaborator. Then uh, she was also again like checking the videos to be sure that we are observing the similar behavior. Uh, but then the time came and I was aware of the development in the computer vision. It actually happened during my master thesis. So if you're not working in a uh, nature, if you're working in a laboratory with birds, you would use actually t this training box design. Actually, uh, you would maybe know Skinner box. What you would do, you would have like packing keys here and there would be a full topper here. And if your pigeon is doing what exactly you want, like let's say you want you want from your pigeon to pack this key, then the food would come. So in the laboratory, you would have this kind of designs. And so in my experiment, I was checking uh, how dopamine is changing pigeons' behavior about the decision, decision making. So uh, dopamine uh, makes you like more interested in gambling, gambling like behavior. So in my case, I was giving a task to the pigeons and uh, it was um, containing like uh, variable delays and the fixed delays. Variable delays means that, so let's say I have one packing key and I was giving a different color, let's say blue. Blue color is, uh, if the pigeon packs the blue color, then pigeon would get reward in one second or seven seconds. This was the variable, this was the gambling option for my pigeons. And if I'm giving red color, let's say, uh, after four seconds, uh, then the packing, they would get the reward. So this was the fixed option. So what I was expecting, if I'm giving them uh, some apomorphin, some dopamine, then they would start to pack more the variable option, which was associated with one to seven seconds, because they would like the immediate reward, the reward, and they wouldn't care about the seven seconds, then they would more tend to pack the variable option like we observed in humans. But what did happen? Uh, we injected apomorphin to our pigeons, which uh, causes the dopamine increase in their brain. And we put them to our training box, then we gave them this variable and the fixed option. Uh, so they were packing everywhere, but not the packing keys. So, yes. So, like, normally what we were doing, uh, behind this packing keys, we have the micro switches. So, we would count how many times, actually, they are packing. But, okay, they are packing everywhere, but we just don't get any, like, one pack on this, like, packing keys. Then, uh, so also, like, we were doing the sensitization, which means that, like, uh, we wanted to inject 10 days continuous the upper morphine, then we can't, um, like, we shouldn't stop inject, we shouldn't stop, like, training it, otherwise we will lose the effect and we have to get new pigeons for the experiment. Then we just say, okay, we are interested in counting the packs. Let's make a design like this. So we put carbon paper and then white paper behind it. Then we just cancel this design. We use card box boxes that we would get from Ikea. Then we put the pigeon inside of this box and like wait until half an hour, then uh, check if there is any packs on the walls or not. I'm not sure if you can see here. So it's not that observable, but like we had many pegs on these white papers. So after all, then the first idea, my advisor told me, okay, so you have to count this by hand. Okay. They were A4 like papers. Then it was, it seemed at the beginning like time consuming, but as a master, 
like a student, you would have more time to like uh, than PhD student, according to your advisor. Then the first idea that I had to make this paper bigger than just count by hand. So of course it was not possible. Then one of my colleagues told me that oh I can uh, write a program with MATLAB. Then uh, we can actually count everything with the program. Then the only thing that you have to do, you have to scan this paper. So I had over, I don't know, 300 papers. Then I, yeah, I had to scan all of them. But at the end, I had all my results like in, I don't know, one hour. So here you see, if I would count by hand, I would have uh, somewhere is 8,000 somewhere. I don't know, somewhere here. Okay, so for example, Apple 6, you have 8,000. It means that it was, it wouldn't be possible for me to count everything by hand. Also, like we also observe some like packing patterns. So w I can also explain what all these things means. Saline means that I'm doing a control injection, checking um, if there is any pack, if I'm injecting something as a control, then I'm injecting apomorphin for one day, two day, three day, then the eight day, then again, after apomorphin injection finish, I'm checking the uh, saline condition again. Then after like apomorphin injections, I'm seeing like uh, over in total, like uh, 2000 packing. So this was the first time that uh, I was aware of the developments in the computer vision. Then uh, when I started my PhD, our, um, like I switched more uh, behavioral experiments. This experiment is about the body embodiment in pigeons, which means that like pigeon has the wings, then also the feet. But if you attach something else to the pigeon, what pigeon would do if you are putting it to the next experimental design? In my experimental design, what I had, I had a feeder here at the entrance of the uh, labyrinth, and also I had a feeder at the end of the labyrinth. And here also, like I had the gap, and this gap decreased uh, until the end of the uh, the labyrinth, and I. Maybe you see here a red plastic arm, but you see here a little bit longer. I attached this like plastic arms to see how they are moving in this labyrinth. Like if they are slow, uh, if I'm like decreasing the size of the gaps, if they're okay after some time, if they're getting used to having something attached on their body. But the real reason that I'm doing this experiment, I would like to see if they can use this attached arms to obtain a food, if they can solve an experimental design with this uh, attached item. But for this, I would like to first define which uh, length of plastic arm that they, uh, I should attach, then they would be comfortable. So I was trying like two centimeter, four centimeter, six centimeter, and I think the highest I tried 12 centimeter, which actually they failed. They couldn't walk like from here, then they were just stopping there. They were only eating food from here and not going to other like feeder. Uh, then the first idea was I had to watch all the videos uh, to decide the arm length for each pigeons. So this was again like time consuming, but but luckily, at the beginning of the ex experiment, what we did, we used this red uh, pigeon clothing to etch the, attach these plastic arms. So every time when I was putting the pigeon, they had to wear this like red cloth to um, like have this like plastic attachment on their body. Then uh, we decided instead of watching all the videos and analyzing everything by hand, let's do color tracking and like to define which pigeon is comfortable, which length of arm. So then we did our pigeon tracker. And what we did here, uh, we did like um, convert our frames to HSV uh, color frame. Then we mask, we create the mask. And if uh, we found the, uh, the contour, then uh, the tracked object uh, defined as the like the the biggest contour is defined as the uh, the tracked object. Actually, I can show you an example here. So here we are like converting our frame to HSV color dimension. Then here you see the map and you see here are like uh, the red cloth that Pigeon was wearing, uh, the biggest contour. Then uh, like uh, we uh, like made a uh, like rectangle around this like contour, then we track this point exactly in our experimental design. 
Like what would be interesting for me, like maybe you may see here to see like, okay, here pigeon is a little bit having problem because here we had the feeder, then walking here again, having uh, some problem, but still walking. And here the smallest gap, it's pigeon again, like uh, suffering, like suffering means that like going back and forward, can't directly like walk through the wall, but here, uh, but at the end, it's going to here to eat from the food. So for me, I would say that this pigeon is comfortable with this length of the arm. So this was the main reason that uh, I was doing this color tracking. So still we are working on the experiment. For some pigeons we define that 10 centimeter of arm length um, is still okay that they can um, like they can uh, walk through the labyrinth, but not for all the pigeons. So still we have like, we have like six pigeons that we want to try this experiment and to go further to teach them uh, how to use this um, like arm to obtain food. So it will turn to a robotic arm project at the end. So this is our like real plan for this experiment. In my second experiment, I'm looking mirror self recognition. So here you see a magpie and like so magpies pass this like mirror self-recognition test and here you are seeing one kind of ant and they're observing that uh, when they have their mirror self image they uh, show different behavior than having another uh, ant to on the next compartment and here you see cleaner grass uh, fish so like this fish actually kind of a social fish would like to clean uh, the other uh, fish or other bigger fish uh, from the parasites or from some like dirt. And they also pass this like mirror self recognition. And here you see the chimps. And here you see an Asian elephant that they also pass this mirror self recognition. So um, mirror self recognition, uh, I can explain how they are doing this. You mark the animal from a point that they can't uh, see directly uh, themselves. Like they can't see this like uh, marking point on their body. But if you put them in front of the mirror, then they would show tendency to reach that uh, point, try to play with it or try to clean it. And you would also see that like they are uh, trying to uh, see the hidden parts of their body. And uh, so these are the behaviors that you would say the this animal passed this mirror self recognition test. So it's also a characteristic of higher intelligence, but limited to a few animal species. But the problem is like, um, you see many different kinds of species here. So all the time they were applying the same methodology for all these animals. Then at the end, they were making a conclusion. Okay, this animal has a mirror self recognition. They passed the marking test. So, okay, marking test. Of course, it's easier for a chimp to pass the marking test because like they can actually directly point their like uh, hand or their extremity to this mark point like um, but to applying the same method for fish for ant then for magpie it's a little bit like uh, not fair actually so in our experimental design what we thought okay so already the pigeons failed in the marking test, but we were not sure exactly what they are seeing as a mirror self-image. Then uh, we decided to check their eating behavior in front of a, uh, their mirror image or in front of another pigeon. So what we did here, we had like mirror approaching condition, which means that we put a mirror, we put the food in front of the mirror and let the pigeon eat from the feeder in front of the mirror. And then we put um, another pigeon to the next compartment, then uh, put also food in front of the stranger pigeon, then uh, check their behavior, how they're eating uh, in front of another pigeon. So this was, uh, these were the approaching conditions. And also we had the away conditions, which means that we put the food on the opposite side of mirror or on the opposite side of the um, stranger pigeon. So first, um, like we didn't think about doing any tracking. We wanted to check the basic behavior. Uh, the first behavior was um, approaching behavior, which means that how long it takes for the pigeon to reach the feeder when the food is in front of the like uh, mirror or in front of the uh, stranger pigeon or here like opposite side of the uh, like other pigeon or opposite side of the uh, mirror image. What we observed here, like um, time latency 
didn't have like uh, didn't show significant e- effect especially in like mirror approaching condition and like a stranger approaching mirror away and stranger away so here we did actually one more experiment we wanted to see uh, the habituation effect of the habituation effect of the mirror and to see if we are not habituating the pigeons to the mirror then they are uh, it takes longer for them to reach the feeder then we also checked the total number of pecks to the feeder and also we didn't observe any like significant effect dif- uh, between the different conditions but if you want to publish something it's not just nice to show this like two conditions like time latency or like the total number of the packs. Uh, you have to show different behavior, behavior crit- uh, criteria, but our pigeons didn't show like any aggressive behavior or any like uh, interesting behavior that we would observe in different animals. Then uh, we decided to do uh, deep learning actually with our pigeons. Um, so we used this open source program, Deep Lab Cut. Then what we did, we create the project and extract, extract the frames from different videos. Then we label which points of uh, the pigeons we would like to um, track. Then we train our uh, deep, neural, deep neural network. Then later we check our uh, network performance. We check the different frames from different videos. If there is any like um, misdetection, then we had to correct. Uh, we had to do the correction. Then after being sure that like all the videos has the uh, right tracking uh, points, then we just like analyze all the videos with our train. Um, example then uh, we plot our results so actually I can show you a small video how it works so you see that um, so we are tracking the head we are tracking the wings wings, we are tracking the uh, body we are tracking the tail so I don't have that much time so therefore I'm speeding up and then so um, then we check the activity rate and also the body posture. Body posture means that like the, if the pigeons are um, like turning their body or the head to the mirror or they are just like turning back to the mirror or like they are uh, more interested to watching the uh, stranger pigeon or like um, or they are like kind of don't care about having a stranger pigeon on the next compartment. What we found that like the when this there is another pigeon on the next compartment, they are more interested in to watch the stranger pigeon compared to the mirror, uh, watching the mirror uh, image. And in the activity rate, we actually observed higher activity rate in the stranger approaching condition compared to the mirror approaching condition, which means that when there is a stranger pigeon on the next in the next compartment, they are kind of like excited and they are mm, like walking around and trying to observe what the other pigeon is doing but in the middle uh, approaching condition uh, they were basically f- like frozen and not doing anything significant then what we concluded that uh, the approaching approaching the stranger condition produced more feeder oriented behavior than the approaching the mirror condition and the time that tends to reach the feeder was increased when the feeder was placed in front of the mirror rather than the in front of the stranger and the activity rate uh, was decreased in the mirror uh, associated conditions compared to the stranger associated um, conditions and we conclude that like um, this mirror self cognition is not a binary test like you may not say that oh like uh, this animal has a mirror self cognition this animal doesn't have a mirror self cognition we think that there are some uh, steps in the between and we should actually think about different methodology to check the different um, species to conclude this mirror self cognition uh, subject so here I would like to thank to my pigeons. <laughs> yes. And um my professor, Professor Honor Gunther Kuhn, and my colleagues uh, Hiroshimatsu and Kevin Mitek. So thank you for your listening. Yes. <laughs> thank you for your attention. Do we have five minutes for questions? Any question? So I have one. Um, is it possible or have you ever experimented in the outside what is less controlled environment? Uh, for the pigeons? 
So our actually next plan, uh, one of next plan is uh, checking collective behavior on pigeons. We have this big aviaries that pigeons actually walking freely and there are over eight, 80 pigeons inside of a big aviary. Then we would like to track them and also to see that um, if they show the collective behaviors like the uh, other social, like animals or birds show. So we have this kind of plans. Yes, like... And also Diplop Cut, the program that I show you, it's actually apl applicable for this like collective behavior stuff. Yeah. Thank you very much. Just have a small question. What mm -hmm. was the Objective of the first experiments. What would you try? Body to get? embodiment. Sorry. Uh, the apomorphine or the body embodiment. Uh, the the one when you were. Uh, so like um to see, so we have the labyrinth to see if pigeon can uh, navigate itself like uh, like the same without having this plastic arm attached on their body. So like as the as a human, if I attach you something on your body and if I'm putting you in a narrow uh, experimental room, then it's, you need some time to get used to having this plastic arm to navigate yourself. But as a human, uh, your cognitive abilities are better than the pigeons, then you, would, you wouldn't have problem. But in my case, like first pigeon would be shocked at having something attached on their body, but still they know that there is food at the end of the labyrinth and they have to navigate themselves to end of the labyrinth. So, but then I'm checking how long it takes uh, for the pigeons to be comfortable with attach with these attached arms, and later on, if they are comfortable, let's say with eight centimeter this attached item, I would like to see if they can also use this attached item as uh, opt as like as their body part, like opt for obtaining but uh, food from a e different experimental design. So, like I would like to see that they can think that now these are this arm is like um, belongs to my body and I can use this to obtain food. Yeah, okay. Any other question? Cool. You? Hey, oh, go. Ahead. <laughs> Wait. You mentioned about behavioral science uh, mm -hmm. having this problem where it can be quite subjective. And I think throughout history, there's many things that we were mm -hmm. sure were the way things were and then discovered later, mm -hmm. not quite true. So do you feel like using computer vision, it's a way that we can start to have a clearer view with less uh, subjectivity or do you see still problems with so this now process? the first uh, like s so the computer vision is sh uh, like kind of decreasing the time that we are spending to analyze the data but the second uh, work will start soon that like we actually should make a different ethograms again with this computer vision data. So like, for example, in my case, I track the wings and I would say that, okay, the pigeon is, so the, the wings are moving a lot. It means that pigeon is doing something like interesting at that point. Then I'm checking the video. Then I would say, okay, this is the attacking. Like still, there is a lot to do that to define uh, different like uh, behavioral criteria, different ethogram from different species. So there are a lot to do. Just this now decreasing the time that we are spending to analyze all the videos instead of like watching 200 videos. Then I'm just like running my program. Then the videos are analyzed. Then if I'm seeing some interesting points and I'm going back to that uh, that video that uh, specific part then I'm saying okay now this behavior is like uh, related with courtship or this behavior is related to attacking or aggressiveness so yes okay oh so sorry been a cute joy but we do have only like a okay <laughs> So the apomorphin experiment, I had 16 pigeons. Then um, in this body embodiment, now I have 12 pigeons. And the mirror experiment, I have eight stranger, eight mirror pigeons. But if you want to publish something uh, like uh, convenient, then it's better to have like more than eight pigeons. So especially for the behavioral experiment. 
So in the mirror experiment, I used uh, the same gender because as a mirror image, they would actually uh, like see uh, the same gender. So then I was using the same. But for apomorphin or for uh, the second body embodiment experiment, like I didn't like think about the gender stuff. But that's a good question for the mirror experiment. So this was the, actually the main concern of us. We wanted to be sure that this stranger pigeon on the next compartment also has the same gender that uh, would be experimented by the experiment pigeon. So, yes. <laughs> Just like so sorry not having more time. So let's thanks very much, Neslim, for the talk. <laughs>